Hi guys, in this episode of Plummy's Thought Zone, I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on the 10th episode of the 7th season of one of my favorite shows ever, Fear the Walking Dead. So, as you may know, this episode was released together with episode 9, and I pretty much watched them back to back, which might also play into why uh, this one felt more boring compared to episode 9, because if I had to watch them week apart, I don't think it would have seemed uh, as boring as it actually seemed like. Although, admittedly, the character that it focuses on, aka Charlie, is not the most interesting character. Like, I like her enough, but I don't necessarily want to see an episode focused just on her, which is kind of what we got in this. Um, but yeah, it was definitely the least interesting episode of the season, I'll, I'll tell you that for sure. But again, just like episode 9, it still had some really interesting shit happen in it overall, you know? So I do want to talk about that. But before we get into that, again, I'm going to give you another example of the masses not having an actual argument about the quality of this season of Fear the Walking Dead and just looking for dumb shit to complain about. Like, for example, the fact that the actor who plays uh, Ali in this episode is 19, while Charlie's actress is 15. Which, by the way, uh, I, I, I just want to uh, remind you of uh, the fact that she's one year older than Kaylee Fleming, who plays Judith on the main show. Let that sink in. She's one year older than her. It's kind of insane, considering how much younger Judith looks like. I mean, Charlie has grown a lot since she first appeared on the show back in Season 4, for sure. Um, she definitely looks like a teenager now. Uh, but Kaylee still looks so much younger, even in the recent teaser for the final part of the final season of the show. She still looks much younger compared to, uh, to Charlie's actress. But going back to what I was saying... Some people, some dumb, 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 dumb people complain about the fact that there's an age difference between the two actors. Ali, uh, Ali's actor and Charlie's actress. They complain that there's like a four-year age difference and the fact that he's an adult. Why? Why? Is this the first time... They've, they've seen adults play teenagers? Like, why is that an issue? First of all, it's not that big of a age difference. Like, you wouldn't complain if it was uh, a 28-year-old with a 24-year-old. And sure, there's the fact that he's an adult and she's not. But he's just 19. Like, what, if he was 18... And, and they kiss, it certainly wouldn't be an issue. And it's just an issue because he's now 19. That's dumb. Like, if it was maybe a bigger age difference. Like, if it was, like, a 19-year-old and, like, a 13-year-old or more so 12-year-old. Yeah, that would be, start to become a little bad. But they're only, like, four-year difference. It's not that major. That, that is the first thing. And the second thing is... They're actors! It's a scene for crying out loud. It's just a scene. Have you not, have you not heard of professionalism? It's just a scene. Big deal if they kiss. They're teenagers. Both of them are teenagers. So what? Plus, from what I've learned... Uh, Charlie's actress's parents uh, are actually very strict for the things that she can be involved in and the things that she can do and the, she, the things that she's allowed to. So if her parents, like IRL parents, allowed her to do that, then who are you to complain? There's few things that I hate more than assholes making people 
out to be victims when they do, themselves don't want to be victims and acting offended for them. Like, that is super fucking annoying. And it just goes to show how people cannot actually talk about the quality of the show anymore. They just have to make a bullshit to whine about. And it really fucking pissed me off. Because for this episode at least, there is some actual criticisms that can be called out about why it wasn't good or whatever. Because Ali's actor, uh, Ali's actor, I don't think uh, was that great. Like, he wasn't bad, but his voice was kind of annoying a little bit. And as a whole, him and Charlie just didn't have enough uh, charisma to really carry an episode. To the point where the best scenes of the episode are the beginning and the end. And sure, I don't necessarily hate the scenes that they had together. Um, but to me, the most entertaining scenes were the beginning and the end. Because we got more of the rest of the cast at the tower. Which includes John Dory Sr., uh, Howard and uh, June. Like, that's uh, the parts of the episode that I enjoyed. So, overall, that's why I still enjoyed this episode, even though it was boring. Like, the middle part, where they were just wasting time and being a couple or whatever. Um, that wasn't the most entertaining thing, but it wasn't bad either. Like, it was fine. And at least Charlie got something to do. Plus, at the end of the episode, when she was screaming at Howard uh, about the fact that he killed uh, uh, Ali... Uh, I don't know, it, her acting chops really showed through for me, like, I really like uh, the way she screamed at him, like, I felt genuine emotion out of her, and I, I really like that about it. And talking about uh, Ali's death, there was something weird about it, where I, I, I first didn't really understand why the fuck he was on the roof in the first place, uh, because I was kind of skipping through the episode, because I wasn't, I just wasn't engaged. Uh, engaged, especially for that scene where they were just being two lovebirds in that room with the butterflies. Uh, so I skipped to the point where he goes to the roof and I think he was trying to stop Strand because Charlie asked him to or something. Um, and destroy maybe like the light on top of the building. Um, and then he got caught by Howard and co. So then he attacks Howard. He gets pushed back. But then Howard tells uh, the guards not to shoot him. And then he goes for it again. And this time Howard chokes him out and throws him off the roof. But it's just that the way... I don't know if it's intentional or it's just a weird cut or whatever. But the fact that he just punches Howard once. Gets pushed back. And then he does it again. Just kind of comes off weird, you know. Plus, uh, after somebody pointed it out to me. I just now cannot unhear it. But the way that Charlie is like looking at butterflies... Uh, and looking at, uh, through the window, and then we hear Ali fall off the roof. Uh, it's just the way he screams is so funny that now I cannot unhear it as uh, as like a funny uh, as a funny bit. But I I did uh, definitely enjoy Howard in this episode a lot. Like I actually did not expect that Howard was gonna be this big part of a se of the season. Like he's been a very Entertaining character like I didn't expect that we were actually gonna see him a, a lot. I, I I was actually kind of sad Before we started the season that we probably weren't going to get much of him, but we've actually gotten a Decent amount of him as a character like he actually feels like a f decently fleshed out character And I, I did enjoy his like kind of like a face off at the end there where he was uh uh, wanting to throw uh, Charlie off the roof as well, and then June threatened him, and then John Dory sided with him, which really kind of came out of nowhere for me, uh, because uh, if you remember in uh, their episode where it was John and June's episode in the, in the first half, it was John who wanted to go with Morgan, uh, and leave the tower, and it was June who wanted to stay, or just didn't want to leave in the apocalypse, but now it seems to be, like, kind of the opposite, but then it turned out that John was just, like, faking it, which, by the way, thank fucking God, finally, somebody has the common sense to act as if they are on the bad side, without having to 
talk about it before. Because, like, so many times I feel like it has been a criticism. Why just don't you fake it and then murder him? Get close and murder the bad guy. But I'm glad that for once they're actually doing that, you know? I mean, I guess we've done it before, but I don't know. This way, the way they're doing it here just feels more satisfying in the sense like, yeah, this is the smartest thing to do. Do it. Fake it. Make kiss ass if you have to. But get up to the top and kill him, you know? And I really did enjoy that. And I honestly kind of can't believe that I actually went and did that with Charlie. Like, got her radiation sickness. Like, that is kind of major. It's big, like... I don't know. I don't know if it's because the writers cannot foresee the consequences of their writing decisions, or they're genuinely that ballsy. But just like with the fact that they actually dropped the nuke at the end of Season 6, which I kind of actually didn't think they would actually go through with it. I thought that maybe they would actually be able to stop it. But no, they actually dropped the fucking bomb because... The second we kind of started to pick up, okay, so what could this key be from, like in, in season 6? Okay, so it's a, from a it's from a submarine, so they're gonna be tro uh, there's gonna be the danger of a nuclear bomb falling in Texas. But they're not gonna go through with it, it's the walking dead, it's a happy ending. And then they drop it. Kind of in the same way, I kind of speculated uh, in the beginning, especially because I saw the teaser for this episode. Uh, I speculated that uh, she was going to get radiation sickness because in the teaser you see her have red skin. And then in the beginning of the episode you get a, range, a bunch of rangers who got radiation sickness and were red. So I was like, okay, so she's definitely going to get radiation sickness. But again, I wasn't sure whether it was that or maybe she was just red from crying or something. I don't know. So I wasn't sure whether they were actually gonna go through with it, but they did. And I honestly can't believe it. Admittedly, it's probably not gonna amount to anything because June, and I quote, uh, June said, and I quote, she should make most uh, of the time that she has. Which essentially could be taken as, yeah, she's probably not gonna live to 60 or 70, but she's not necessarily gonna die tomorrow or whatever. Uh, so they can still have the wiggle room to have her leave, uh, uh, live on for a while before killing her. But still the fact that they gave her radiation sickness feels kind of ballsy. Like, I, I honestly can't believe they actually did that. It kind of feels to me like, imagine if Enid on the main show got radiation sickness. It, that's kind of how it feels to me. And yeah... Uh, part of me definitely wonders whether they've gone this route because they plan to kill her before they bring Madison in at the end of the season. I'd say probably not, but my conspiracy brain is definitely speculating in that regard. Could be, could be, you never know. But yeah, um, I actually kind of overall, uh, uh, overall enjoyed uh, Charlie and Ali's uh, relationship. I feel like it was built up in a believable way, you know? It was very much like Henry and Lydia on the main show, so... Yeah. I definitely... At least expect that people are not gonna like this episode because it focuses on Charlie, a teenage girl, which the fandom hates uh, already because she killed uh, uh, Nick. But a teen romance... And uh, a teenager boy being dumb because of his love for a girl. Yeah. I know the fandom hates that shit. But yeah, overall it was a pretty entertaining episode. It was a big episode, sure, for Charlie. But it was also a big episode for, for Howard as well, in my opinion. I wonder if he's gonna get his own episode. I really wish he will. But yeah, I don't know. Overall, I enjoyed it, but I'm definitely much more excited for episode uh, 11, because in the teaser, uh, not only we see that he, it's going to be an episode focused on Daniel, uh, the title of the episode is going to be called Ophelia, but also in the teaser, it's just, there's this really funny scene with Daniel saying that, uh, it's scary what I'm going to have to do to them. <laughs> it's just the way he giggles, it's just so 
so fucking uh, uh, awesome, and I can't wait to watch that episode. I'm really excited for that episode. I feel like that episode is gonna win a lot of people over, and I feel like the rest of the episodes of the season are gonna be good, because we don't really have much time left, you know, uh, with the plot, because we have to finish uh, and get, get through the war against Strand, uh, get to see where Madison, when Madison is gonna show up, and finish out the Padre stuff, so... Yeah, there's a lot, and we don't really have that much time left. But yeah, um, I think that's pretty much everything I have to say right off the bat, so let's just go through my notes uh, and see if we missed anything. Okay, so the first thing I've written is, what is Charlie doing outside? Um, and that is obviously in relation to the beginning of the episode where we see Charlie outside. I actually wasn't sure whether it was her because the way she was dressed looked very much like Althea. So I was like, Althea is back? Uh, but no, she was not. Uh, it was Charlie. It was kind of hard to tell, uh, especially because Charlie has grown up so much. So uh, there's that as well. Um, but yeah, then there's... Uh, I've written, Charlie, you're not a good liar. Although, I give you that, she's a better liar than Maggie. Uh, because Maggie's poker face is garbage. But Charlie, at least, her story is believable. And at least, the show acknowledges that ver she very much could be lying. Like, Howard acknowledges uh, that she is probably lying. But that's why he is going to be sending her on this mission with Ali. To test her. To see whether she's telling the truth or not. And like I've said uh, before for that episode of the main show. Like of the, of the final season. I think it was episode 15. Uh, where Maggie was obviously fucking lying. The most obvious lie ever. I think the show still made it in a way where. It was trying to portray it in, in the sense that. Uh, Lance knows that Maggie was lying. But he was just trying to make it so. She would be caught red handed whereas here he knows that she's probably lying but that's why he wants to test her so both are valid approaches i just feel like this is more satisfying because i feel like it makes the characters smarter while for the other one it is kind of me looking into it uh but yeah i don't know so yeah uh the next thing i've written is this is lydia and henry all over again and it very much was it very much was um, next thing I've written is, is Charlie gonna get radiation burns? Because like I said, I predicted it. Although, if you watched uh, the trailer uh, for the episode and then you watch the beginning of the episode, you just put two and two together and it's very easy equation. So yeah, um, next thing I've written is, I'm glad Howard is not an idiot like Lance on the main show, literally what I just went uh, through. Although he almost definitely knew Maggie was hiding something. So yeah, what I already went through. Like Lance knew that Maggie was lying, that she was the one who uh, helped, uh, 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 who killed everybody, the, all the Commonwealth soldiers uh, and Toby at that location, even though it wasn't necessarily her. Uh, and it does feel a little bit... A, like a little bit of a reach for him to like realize that it was Maggie because Maggie was just there she stumbled upon that situation she did not cause it but he definitely knew he was uh she was lying uh he was just wanting to ca catch her in the in the red handed essentially like I said um next thing I've written is how convenient you just found a random shotgun because in the episode uh they go into a bowling uh, alley and uh, he teaches uh, Charlie how to, to play bowling. Which is something that I haven't played myself, so I hope I get to experience that at some point. Um, I'm just poor, you know. I don't even know where I would have to go to go to a bowling alley. I, I assume I'll probably have to go to the capital. Because I doubt there is one in the smaller cities. But yeah, and there uh, Ali finds a shotgun, like he just literally reaches over the uh, the thing and just grabs a shotgun, but I, I think it, they explain it, again I'm not exactly sure because I was skipping bits and pieces of this episode, 
Um, I think he says that he was coming to this location plenty of times, so he knew that they were hiding a shotgun. Although, why did, didn't he take it uh, with him afterwards? Kind of boggles my mind, but whatever. Uh, next thing of Britain is she is so gonna kill him. I'm not sure what I wrote that in relation to. I guess I was saying that uh, uh, Charlie was gonna kill Ali, but I'm not sure what led me to that expectation. Can't tell you really. I don't really remember. Um, next thing I've written is called it. She got sick. I actually can't believe she did it. Um, and like I said, I actually can't believe they actually went uh, through with that. Uh, it it's crazy. Like like I said, with the bombs. They've definitely gone through some, like, the writers have definitely uh, committed to some really dark and bleak shit uh, in season 6 and 7. That is another reason why I can just cannot accept uh, people's opinion that the show is bad now. Like, for crying out loud, they had a nuke, they had a baby be stillborn, they had a walker baby, and they have a teenager suffer radiation poisoning. What do you want them to do? Like, the main show hasn't done even half that dark shit. Um, next thing I've written is, Ali, you just signed your death warrant. Uh, which I think is in relation to the fact that he had let out all the butterflies that were collected for Strand. He let them out all in the room. Um, and yeah, he very much did sign his death warrant because he died after that, although not because of the butterflies. Um, next thing I've written is, oh come on, kill them in a different way please. And that is in relation to the fact that Ali uh, dies in the same way like Will, which was cool the first time, but how many characters have been threatened to be thrown off the roof? Like, come on, give us at least a different death, you know? Um, next thing I've written is, uh, Dory is a bad guy all of a sudden, which I already went uh, over, like, uh, he all of a sudden sided with Howard, and I thought that was like a weird, out of character moment, but no, he was just playing, uh, playing it up uh, for him, because he wants uh, Strand to trust him, and so he could be like an angel on his shoulder, you know? Um... Next thing I've written is, he knows that we are the main characters, bitch. Which is in relation to the dialogue between June and Howard, where uh, June threatens Howard. Uh, if he does anything to, uh, to Charlie, I think it was, that she is going to uh, talk to Strand. And she told him that... Strand knows something that both her and he knows, which is what we, for which I've written that Strand knows that Strand and June and Charlie are the main characters and Howard is just a character for the season. But what June meant in that situation was that she is more valuable to Strand than Howard, who is just a right hand man, but June is a doctor and there aren't many doctors to go around, but there are many uh, right-hand me right men that can be had, you know? Okay, uh, the, the final thing I've written is, okay, so that was an act. For once, a character actually plays along convincingly. Because, like, the only other times we've had uh, stuff like that is with, like, Eugene and the Saviors, um, I guess, uh, Andrea and the Governor, or uh, Negan and the Whispers, but I don't know, it's just more satisfying to see the character like play it up the way, he, like very enthusiastically, it's the first time the characters have actually like played it up enthusiastically I guess is uh, uh, the biggest difference between the ways we've seen it before and now. So yeah, that's pretty much all my notes. Overall, Definitely a more boring episode than episode 9, but not necessarily worse, like I still think it was a decent episode, and I'm still gonna give it like an 8 out of 10, like it's pretty good, they're pretty entertaining episodes, 
But next episode definitely seems like it's gonna be at least a 9 out of 10. Because it's gonna be focusing on Danio. Seems like we're actually gonna have some really cool action. And yeah, I'm just really excited about that. So I hope you guys are too. But I am curious, what do you guys think about this episode? So comment your thoughts down below and let's have a discussion about it. And also before we end this video, I just want to give a huge shout out to my currently one Patreon on Patreon, Deadpool. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate it. It really means a lot to me that you have decided to support me and have continued to support me for such a long time. I hope you continue to enjoy my content and continue to support me going forward. Thank you very much. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, Please leave a like, subscribe, also check out the description to my Twitter if you want to follow me over there and to my Wattpad or post my stories, because in addition to doing all these videos on my channel, I'm also a writer. And if you don't enjoy my stories or simply enjoy my videos, you can head over to my Patreon or to my coffee account where I can pledge your support and help your channel going, help support me so I can keep writing stories you enjoy. But if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine, you can still help me out in other ways like liking this video, subscribing to the channel and especially sharing this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. And I think this is pretty much it for this video, so hopefully I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye!